okay, I drew the picture, wrote down everything that we explicitly know that from the problem. What else do we know? Gravity. We know gravity, okay? So acceleration is equal to negative g, which is negative 9.81 meters per second squared, okay? I, I think that's about all we know, isn't it? What equate can we use number one? Equation number one. Why not? We've got acceleration, so throw number one out the window. Okay. Now what? <laughs> let's try number three. Fair enough. Okay, so let's see. Delta y equals v naught y times t plus one half a y times t squared. Okay. And notice I'm putting everything in the y direction because the ball falls here and goes there. And from this time period here, from here to here, that's your 4.1 meters and your, two point, or your 0.21 seconds. Where does this apply? Where can we, what can we do with this equation? What would, what would, where can we put these? Okay. So put your L here, your time here and here. So your 4.1 and your 0.21, and of course your gravity goes here. We can get V naught out of that, right? That sounds like a good place to start. Okay, let's do that. Let's do the algebra first. <clears throat> is that uh, delta y positive or negative? Is it gonna, should I put in a positive L or a negative L? And how do you know? Why is it negative L? It starts high, ends low, right? That's what, it's a flower pot, isn't it? It's fallen. So, so this should be a negative L, so I said that wrong. That should be a negative L. Okay, so let's write this out. Negative L equals V naught Y times T minus G over two T squared. How are we gonna get V naught Y? <clears throat> I think you said it right, but my ears don't work very well. Uh huh. Yeah. Take this whole chunk here, add it over there. So we're going to have g over 2 t squared minus l equals v naught y times t. Now comes the easy part. Let's divide both sides by t. Make sure it's both sides, the whole sides. So v naught y. Uh, let's see, that t can go in here and here. So it's gonna be G over two times T minus L over T. Did I do that right? Y'all double check me. I'm doing algebra in my head in front of people. That's dangerous. Okay, uh, does this answer the question? So what are we gonna do about it? Say it again? Oh, okay, so we can plug in some numbers and get an answer here. Okay, but, but when we get V naught Y equals some number, and we, you're right, we can do that because we know all these numbers.
When we get that number answer, what does that do for us? What are we going to do? What equation? And what, is, what does that V naught Y mean? Yeah. Remember, our whole equation right here dealt with just this piece. Just when you were in there with your high-speed camera timing that flower pot as it falls down. So, so V naught Y is right here. Which would be the final velocity from when it started on the roof. Does that make sense to everybody? So what we're going to do is we're going to take that V naught Y and say, hey, guess what? That's the VFY from when it started up here. Does that make sense to everybody? So we're going to turn it into a new problem now. And we're going to switch. We're going to, instead of talking about this spot, we're going to talk about this spot. And it starts up here and ends down here, but what it ends with here is what it started with on, the second, on this window part. Y'all see that logic? Y'all all right with that? Any questions? Okay. Well, now what equation are we going to use? Yes. In your V not Y, I think you forgot the side of the GO2 squared T. Say, I, I forgot what now? I may, you may, I just, my ears. No. Never mind? Okay. I mess things up, so let me know if I do. I, I took the T and sent it here and got rid of the square and took it here and put it over the L, I mean, the, under the L. Okay, so what equation are we going to use for this chunk here? Can we use number one? No, don't use number one. Why? Still accelerating. Okay, so don't use number one. Four sounds like a good one. Why, why is four a good one? It's got V initial, it's got V final, and it's got the thing we're looking for. What are we looking for? That distance. Number four. It's VF squared equals V naught squared plus two AY delta Y. <clears throat> what should we call that delta Y? What's in this? I, I labeled it question mark here. What do y'all want to call that? Question mark? H? D? I don't know. What do y'all say? For this piece up here. What, 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 do want, what, what letter do you want to assign to that? H? Okay. So let's, let's look for H. Okay. So that's going to go right here. Is that going to be a positive H or a negative H? Negative. Why is it negative? It's starting high and ending low. It's going down. So this is going to be a negative H. What's going to go right here? Negative G. Okay, what goes here? Zero. Zero. Oh. And what goes here? The answer we got up there. Okay, how y'all doing? Does this make sense? Solve it, for, solve it for age. Now, let me ask you something. Okay, so you go to plug these numbers in here. I'm going to write out the numbers right here. Okay, what number do I plug in there for G? 9.81. Wait, wait, wait. Why not negative 9.81? I already did the negative right there. You see that? Don't do it twice now, just once. Okay, so just going to be 9.81 positive, because I already plugged the negative in earlier, over 2 times 0.21 minus L, which was 4.1 over 0.21. What do y'all get for that? 
20? Is that what you said? Now we're going to plug that number in here. <coughs> so let's do some algebra. Solve this for h. What's going to happen when we put a... Well, let me write this out. We're going to have vf squared equals 2 times g times h. Wait a second. How do I make this positive? Yeah, a negative g times a negative h comes out positive. Y'all see that? Okay, so to solve this for h, this is the easy stuff, right? I'm just going to divide both sides by 2g. So h is equal to vf squared over 2g. So what am I going to plug in there for vf squared? Twenty point five five. What's that? It would be. Uh, but we're going to square it anyway, so it's not going to matter. This question make more sense? How many of all how many, how many of y'all were wrestling with that one? Okay. How far this spot is above the top of the window? Is it going to be like what? a little ways? I got 21. Yeah, it's moving pretty quick by the time it gets there. Um, is that H not a question? Uh, yeah. Say that one more time. Yeah, so we're just finding the value of h here. And I think that's all that Web, cause WebAssign asks how far, right? How far above the top of the So when it says how far, it doesn't want positive or negative. It just wants the amount. Well, that's not good. I hate the red X's. Sounds better, because that's what that's what was making me pause when you said that. There's a problem here. Yeah. What What's wrong with this? What's What's wrong with this answer? It's positive. Which way should that flower pot be going? Should be going down. So that means we did something wrong. Either we plugged these numbers in wrong. Oh, you added here when you were supposed to subtract? Lily, when you subtract, you got negative something? Negative what? That sounds a whole lot better. Okay, so now we're going to plug that in here. 
negative 18.49. Now, notice that negative doesn't make anything different here because you're just going to square it. But the fact that it's a different number will change your answer. Does it give you the green X this time? Or no, they don't, it's, it's the red X or the green check. You don't get a green X. <laughs> Uh, that, that sounds like a green check. Uh, yes. Okay, good. <laughs> that, that's the way these tend to go. You stare at it for a good hour and a half, two hours. You're exhausted. And, and then you try the next problem. <laughs> and then you read it and say, what is that asking? And then you stare at that one for an hour and a half. And that's the way it goes. <clears throat> okay, any other questions? Y'all doing all right? Okay. Yes, we left off talking about centripetal acceleration. Let me go grab a toy. So let's see. Um, I've got this. You can see it. There's a string here with this copper tube that's free to slide on it. And you see the copper tube. It's just a copper tube. I flared out the ends on it so that it wouldn't cut the string. And there's a nut here and a pair down there. And there's these red marks on here that are kind of faded, but there's a red mark right there. Red mark right there, and another one right there. Those are at 25, 50, and 75 centimeters. So anyway, I'm trying to see if I can. Now I knew I ended up bonking my head at least once doing this. Hold it. I had a 75 centimeter mark. I swing this too fast. I was going to bump my head soon. Let me try it. 
which are 50 centimeters. Let's try this. Okay, see, how, see what happens when I swing it too fast? It picks it up. What happens if I swing it too slow? The side's getting bombed. What's going to happen? It's going to slide down, right? So, why is it? How can it pick that up? What force? Uh, so it's pulling out. What? The string is pulling out. When it's swinging like that, it's got weight behind it. It's the weight. Okay, so let me, let me change the story slightly. We'll come back to this. You're in a car. The passenger seat on the, on the right side, okay? And the driver's crazy. And I don't know why you got in a car with a crazy driver, but you did. And you're in the passenger seat. And the driver decides to hang a hard left. What happens to you? You're slammed out there. Why? Let me ask. Let me ask you something. Is there a force on you? What's that? There's a force on you. Which way is it pulling you? I see. Down. What's pulling you down? Gravity's pulling you down. That's a, that is a force on you for sure. What's another one? I heard somebody say normal force. Where's normal force? Okay, so there's two normal forces. There's the one from your chair you're sitting on, right? And that one's pushing you up. So the chair you're sitting on is pushing you up. Gravity's pulling you down. Those two offset each other. And you don't go up or down. Fair enough? Okay. And you're saying another one. What's the other one? So as the car's hanging a hard left, you're slammed up against the door on your right. Which way is the door pushing you? In. To the circle. Does that make sense? So, so let's go back to this for a second. I swing this over my head. Okay. Ow. This is dangerous. Okay. So now I'm swinging this over my head. What happens if I, I didn't bring one, but what if I had a razor blade here and I put that razor blade right up there and it cut the string as it went by? What? Oh, wait, wait. That sounds like one of Newton's laws. Which law would that be? Number one. An object in motion tends to stay in motion, right? So this, this, this nut that's tied to this string, if the string suddenly let go of it, which way would it go? Because an object in motion tends to stay in motion. It tends to go in a straight line. Does that make sense? So let me say it a different way. What's keeping it from going in a straight line? The string. Do you all see that? And which way is the string pulling? Towards the center. Inwards. Do you all see that? It's a little counterintuitive because our gut says, as we're sitting in that car seat and the crazy driver's hanging a hard left, our gut says, I'm being pulled out. You all know what I'm saying? Doesn't your gut say that? But that's not what's going on. Because what would happen if that car door weren't there and the seat belt wasn't there? You'd go straight while the car goes left. Does that make sense? And you're saying, but wait a second. I know I'm being pulled out. <laughs> Let's change the story slightly. You're on one of those merry-go-rounds. Y'all know those things, right? And there's the bully that's like making it spin faster and faster. And you're hanging on for dear life and your knuckles are turning white because you're holding on so hard. How many of y'all were the bully? Just, you know, I know some of y'all were the bu bully. I was the kid hanging on saying, stop. 
Okay. Anyway, so the bully's making this thing swing faster and faster and faster and swing faster and faster and faster, and I'm holding on with all my might. And and y'all have been in that situation, and you know when you let go, you're going to go out. Right? But you don't. From your perspective, it looks that way. But from the bird sitting in the tree saying, man, those kids are crazy. From the bird sitting in the tree looking down at the situation, the bird says, that kid let go and went in a straight line. Let me draw the picture. Here's the merry-go-round. And when I let go right here, Newton's first law kicks in. Because it says an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted on by an outside force. Well, that outside force was me holding on to those bars of that merry-go-round, and the bars were pulling me in. But as soon as I let go, the unless acted on by an outside force is no longer there because there's no more outside forces. So I now go in a straight line. Does that make sense to everybody? So if this merry-go-round is spinning this way, when I let go right here, I'm going to go that way in a straight line. And you say, but I've been on those things. I'm telling you I went straight out. But that's because you're watching the merry-go-round. Look what happens. One second later, when I'm here, you know, I, I let go here, and what, just a, a half of, you know, a tenth of a second later, I'm there. The merry-go-round that was here is now here. And a tenth of a second later, when I'm here, the merry-go-round that I used to be holding on to is now here. And a tenth of a second later, when I'm here, that part is still there. Do you see how it moves with me as I let go? And so while I'm watching that merry-go-round as I'm letting go, it appears that I'm going straight out. But I'm telling you, if you were sitting in the oak tree above this, watching the whole thing happen, you'd say, that kid went in a straight line. Does this make sense to everybody? So here's my point. In order for something to go in a circle, there must be a force pulling it to the middle. Are y'all bought? Does this make sense to everybody? There has to be a force pulling it to the middle. In the case of me on the merry-go-round, what was it? The, the metal bars that I was holding on to. In the case of you in the car hanging a hard left, what was it? The door pushing you to the middle. In the case of this, the nut on the end of this string, what was it? Or what is it? The string. There's always something pulling it to the inside of the circle. Does this make sense to everybody? <clears throat> if there's nothing pulling it to the inside of the circle, what's it going to do? It's going to go straight. Tangent to the circle. Wait, wait, there's a fancy math word. What's tangent mean? Yeah, you remember, it's a fancy math word. So if you've got a circle here, and I pick this po point right there, tangent to that line is a, tangent to that point is a line that touches it at that point and that point only. Remember that math definition? And so if I let go here, I'm going to go in a straight line that's tangent to that point where I was. Okay? Y'all okay with all this stuff? So let me just try to confuse you a little bit farther. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> On the FAA exam, what's FAA? Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, okay? You want to be a pilot, you've got to take the FAA exam. It's the way it goes. There's, there's an exam at every step of the way. <clears throat> it asks you about propellers that have hydraulics in them that control the pitch of the propeller, okay? And those hydraulics... The f what's hydraulics? The fluid. Okay, the fluid in the propeller is thrown to the outside of the propeller. And the FAA exam asks you about the centrifugal force that pulls that fluid out. What's centrifugal force? 
it's fake. Say that again, because you just said that just right. Mm hmm. What do you mean it's imaginary? Is there nothing pulling it out? It's like what you talked about when you're spinning with you. It makes it seem like you're on it. Yeah, from the fluid's point of view, it feels like it's being thrown to the outside of the propeller. But if you were standing outside the propeller and you could see inside of it and the fluid that was in there, you'd say that fluid's just trying to go in a straight line and it can't because there's a propeller holding it in. Does this make sense to everybody? So centrifugal is a word that's thrown around in the English language as if it's real. <laughs> the FAA uses it on the exam. <laughs> is it real? It's not a real force. The centripetal force is the force that's real. So centrifugal is this fictional force that pulls you out. Centripetal is the real force that's pulling you in. If the centripetal force wasn't there, it would go in a straight line. You chop the end of the propeller off, where's that fluid going to go? Tangent to the circle. It's going to squirt everywhere. It's going to be a big mess. How y'all doing? <clears throat> yeah, you should keep those two straight. Centrifugal, you mean spell those? Centrifugal. Sometimes the way the Brits pronounce things helps you spell it. It's like aluminium, you know. It helps you spell that stuff. <coughs> Centrifugal versus Which one's real? This one's real. This one only exists from the viewpoint of the one that's spinning. Let me prove to you that it's fictitious. When you're in that car seat, and the car's hanging a hard left, is there anything, like a person, an electric field, a magnetic field, a gravitational field, is there anything pulling you out? Name the thing that grabbed you and pulled you out. There was nothing there. You weren't actually pulled out. It's totally fictitious. You just felt like you were being pulled out, but you weren't actually being pulled out. You were just trying to go in a straight line because you're an object, and objects tend to go, and objects in a straight line tend to go in a straight line. Does that make sense to everybody? <clears throat> okay. Any questions? Y'all doing all right with, with centripetal versus centrifugal? Centrifugal? In, in America, we say cent centrifugal. In England, they, cent they, they say centrifugal. Tomato, tomato. <clears throat> okay. Well, let's do some math. Because that's what we do over here. We play with math all day. Centripetal acceleration. <clears throat> okay. Let's say we've got a rock on a string. Just like what I had over here, only that was a nut on a string, but let's pretend it's a rock on a string. And its speed is traveling this way. Okay. It's going in a circle, therefore what must exist? There must be a force. If there weren't a force pulling it in, it wouldn't go in a circle. So there must be a force pulling it to the into the center of the circle. In the case of a rock on a string, it's the string. So there's a force pulling it to the center of the circle. 
Now, if there's a force, now let's jump to the second law. What's the second law say? F equals ma. So if there, if there must be a force, if there's a force, what does that tell you about this? If there is a net force, it will accelerate. Does that make sense to everybody? And that's what we're talking about here with this. Which way is it accelerating? Even if it's not getting faster, it has to accelerate because there's a net force on it. Let me say that again. Did you all catch that? You should be asking a question in your head right now. Wait a second. What's acceleration? What is acceleration? Yeah, how much your velocity is changing. Okay, now let me say what I said a minute ago. Even if it's not getting faster or slower, so how much is your, how much is your speed changing? It's not changing, okay? Even if your speed is not changing, there is a force on it, therefore it is accelerating. Okay, do you have the question in your head? What's the question in your head? Should, there should be a contradiction here. Are y'all seeing it yet? Let me say this again. What's acceleration? Change in velocity over time. I'm saying even if the speed doesn't change. Okay, so what does that mean? What's delta V? Zero. What does that mean A is? Zero. Okay, but now I'm saying if there's a force on it, and there has to be because it's going in a circle, then there is acceleration. This is something, and you're saying, but it's nothing. Do you all understand the question in your head <laughs> that I'm hoping is in your head now? Mm. Which way is the speed? Let's turn it into a velocity. Tangent to the circle. Which way is the force? In. So it's not going to change the speed. But now look at this. You see this? Now there's a little underline there. That's important. That means acceleration is a vector, but so is velocity. So it's not just the amount. It's the direction. So this force that we're talking about here changes the direction, but not the amount. Okay? So with that said, let's figure out which way that acceleration is. You can kind of guess. So there's these two blue lines here. When the rock is up there and when the rock is here, when the rock is here, which way is it going to be going? Tangent to the circle, right? When the rock is here, which way is it going? Tangent to the circle. So there's those two lines there. Okay? <clears throat> well, those are crooked vectors. When we see crooked vectors, what do we do with them? Break them down, x and y. Okay? There they are, broken down, x and y. <sighs> well, if we want to find change in velocity, what do we need to do? What does change? The little triangle, delta, what does that mean? Final minus initial, right? Okay, so let's do that. Final minus initial. V2x minus V1x. That's nothing. Why is it nothing? Yeah, see this x piece here? And this x piece here? They're the same thing. When you subtract them, what do you get? Nothing. But now look at the y piece. Uh, the y direction. You subtract those, you get something. It's not zero. Because they're not the same. They're the same amount, but opposite directions. 
I'm a minute over, and y'all are getting anxious. So we'll, we'll, we'll start up. We'll pick up here next time, okay?